stuff Choose your materials carefully Think about all of their properties You wouldn't wear paper clothes in the rain Or use wood in a window pane Let the belts bend easily Cause they have flexibility And rubbers quite fantastic Children, you just heard a song. And uh, what was the song all about? Yes, that's right. It was all about materials that are found all around us. So in this chapter, we're going to study materials we use. This is chapter 15. As you know, there are innumerable materials found in our surroundings, right? And these can be easily categorized into two, that is natural and man-made materials. Now you very well know what are natural materials. Those which are found in the nature are natural materials. Now let's see what are man-made materials. So man-made materials are those materials obtained from natural materials through chemical processes. Example over here could be plastic glass, thermocol, etc. So, here is the list of materials that are found in our surroundings and some of them are man-made. Can you say which ones out of these are natural and man-made? Children, do you know which substances were used earlier? for cleaning teeth and now uh, what do we use today to clean our teeth well let's watch we have seen that in olden times in India acacia bark neem twigs coal powder ash tooth powder salt were used for cleaning teeth today However, a variety of toothpaste and tooth powders are used for this purpose. And which one is your favorite among all these? Well, the principal ingredients of a toothpaste, calcium carbonate and calcium hydrogen phosphate, remove the dirt on teeth. These also polish the teeth. A certain proportion of fluoride in the toothpaste helps prevent tooth decay. Fluoride is essential for the strengthening of bones and the enamel covering of teeth. This is the most common material we all use that is detergents. So the word detergent is derived from the Latin word Detergy, which means to wipe away. A detergent is a substance that cleans or wipes away dirt. Soap nut, that is Ritha. Soap pod, that is Shikakai. Soaps, washing soda, washing powder, liquid soap, shampoo are all detergents. Experiment Take some clean water in a glass container. Add some oil to it. The layer of oil will float on the water. Now Take a straw and stir the mixture vigorously. After stirring it for some time, you will find that the liquid in the bottle 
settles in two distinct layers that is oil and water and why this happens we have already studied in the last uh, last chapters now to this we are adding a, a solution of detergent and here i have a solution of shampoo so we are adding it to the mixture and now we are going to stir the solution again stir the mixture again Now as you can see that the water and oil has become an homogeneous mixture and the color of the mixture appears milky. And now we are going to study why does this happen. The molecules of a detergent are long and the properties of its two ends are different as you can see in the picture. A molecule of a detergent holds onto a water molecule at one end and an oil molecule at the other end. As a result, the molecules of oil mix with the water. This is how soap acts when we wash ourselves or our soiled clothes. Our body and clothes become oily for various reasons such as applying gels or creams, oiling our hair, etc. The oily layer sticks fast to the crisscrossing threads of the material of our clothes. Soap is used for removing it due to the property of holding on to both oil and water. Soap water spreads easily on many types of surfaces. The property of a substance of spreading on a surface is called surface activity and the substance is said to be a surfactant. Detergents are active, surface active. One effect of surface activity is lather formation. Now we move on to natural detergent soap nut is also called as ritha and soap pod that is shikekai these are natural detergents which are commonly used they contain a chemical substance called as saponin soap nut and soap pod do not have any harmful effect on human skin or on silk, woolen or cotton threads. Man-made detergent Soap Soap is a man-made detergent which has been in use since ancient times. It is believed that soap was invented in the West about 2000 years ago. In those days, soap was prepared using animal fat and ash wood. Today, we have a variety of soaps. Types of soaps Hard soap is used for washing clothes. It is a sodium salt of fatty acids. Soft soap is used for bathing. It is a potassium salt of fatty acids. It does not cause irritation of the skin. As you can see in the first picture here, the soap lathers easily with soft water. But in hard water of a well or a, a tube well, soap does not give lather but forms a scum. As a result, soap loses its cleansing property. Synthetic detergent. Now children, let's study what are synthetic detergents. Nowadays, synthetic detergents have taken the place of soap. There are several methods of producing these detergents. The long structural units are obtained from raw materials which are mainly fats and kerosene. Detergents are obtained by subjecting these raw materials to a variety of chemical processes. 
Synthetic detergents are used in many types of cosmetics. Synthetic detergents can be used in hard water as well. So synthetic material, synthetic detergents are an option to those places where hard water is found. A little more additional information about uh, synthetic detergent. So these are also called as syndets. Now what is the meaning of syndet means syndet is a combination of two words as you can see over here. Syn is stands for synthetic and det stands for detergent. So uh, it's called as syndets. Now children where are these used? These are used in uh, cosmetics too. Okay, it's especially in cleansers and beauty bars. So you can see some brands over here. And it's clearly written over here. Cleansing and moisturizing Sendent Bar. Another example over here. And another picture over here. Okay. Now in the next slide we are going to see what is the difference between synthetic detergent and soap. So soap versus Sendent Bars. So children this is also an additional information. So I'm not reading you just go through this. So children are you interested in preparing soap at home if yes watch this video carefully soap material 15 grams sodium hydroxide 60 ml coconut oil 15 grams salt perfume a glass rod beaker tripod wire gauze burner water mold etc. Procedure Take 60 ml coconut oil in a beaker. Dissolve 15 grams sodium hydroxide in 50 ml water. Mix the sodium hydroxide solution in the oil slowly while stirring it with a glass rod. Heat the mixture and boil it for 10 to 12 minutes stirring it all the while. Take care that the mixture does not boil over while heating. Dissolve 15 grams salt in 200 ml water. Moving on to the last part of the chapter. Well, you can see two pictures of houses over here. What are the materials used for construction? And which of the houses seen in the picture have a strong structure and why? Well, your answer would be the first house, right? Because it's look, it looks so strong and sturdy. Why? Because it is made out of cement. Okay. So, let us study something more about cement. So cement here is an important material which is used in construction. You know or you must have seen cement sheets, blocks or pillars and pipes. Now these are used for construction and these are made out of cement. And what is cement made out of? So cement is a dry greenish gray powder with fine particles as you can see in the picture and you must have surely seen at some construction sites now what is it made up of well it is made up of silica that is sand aluminia that is aluminium oxide lime iron oxide and magnesia that is magnesium oxide
Portland cement is the most commonly used cement for construction work. It uh, is made up of 60% lime that is calcium oxide, 25% silica that is silicon dioxide and 5% alumina and the rest is iron oxide and gypsum. Now children, the Portland cement gets its its name from the stone quarried from the Isles of Portland in England which has a similar texture as you can see in this picture over here. Going back to those who made history of cement and concrete. In ancient times the Romans had made cement as well as concrete. They used to make aqueous cement by mixing volcanic ash in moistened lime. It was a very durable cement. With the decline of Roman Empire, this art of making cement was also forgotten. In the year 1756, the British engineer John Smitten developed the method of making aqueous cement. This is how concrete is made by adding cement, sand, gravel and water. Now you must have surely seen these things flying up and down and you must have seen mm. these at the construction sites isn't it what is this called a mixer yes cement mixer okay. and this is one type okay we'll just go a little further and see how all this comes down okay see a tray is kept below and when you push that handle the mixture is collected in the tray and then used. Now this kind of mixer can be used where there is less construction but if there is more construction of work on a large scale then what is used? Have you seen this plying up and down Clairol? and it works mechanically right? See how conveniently this man is moving and you can make it fall, you can make the mixture fall anywhere you want. Okay and then later on it is flattened so this type of mixer is seen where heavy work is to be done. Construction of buildings, roads, malls, etc. Okay. So children, with that, we finish with our uh, science chapter number 15.